There aren't that many of us in the room who were here when we did the Clean Act. I don't know if you, you certainly weren't here in 1970. You were here in 1990. We heard all of these scare tactics firsthand, and what the Congress did on a bipartisan basis is we let common sense prevail. We acted decisively to clean up air pollution, and our nation has benefited er ever since. And I would suggest that your ideas are not bold. They're a repeat of the old scare tactics. Let's get the American people really scared. The Democrats are going to charge you more money than it's impossible to achieve. Why, only the South Pole on one side is, is uh, sinking and the other side not. I, I just think that the American people ought to see through uh, what you have to say. And uh, I would hope you would not go to every campus to give your speeches, but urge Republicans and Democrats to work together. Just don't attack Gore and attack the president and attack the Democrats. Work with us. And if you don't think it's a problem, then I don't know why you're even giving us those six or seven solutions, because I think there is a problem, and you want to face up to us and help us solve that problem. My time has expired, and yield back the time. Um, am I allowed to uh, respond? Yeah, the gentleman would be allowed to respond. Sure. Well, I, I didn't ask okay. a question, and, I, and I, 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 I don't mind if he responds, but the rules that, that I understand we've always had is members have five minutes to either ask a question, and I ask you one up front, and then to say whatever we want to say. Mr. Chairman. I, 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 I would uh, certainly uh, uh, think you ought to be able to respond if you want to, but that's going to be up to the committee uh, to, to violate the rules and give you an extra privilege that other chairmen have not had. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we have. The gentleman's time has expired, but I can recognize. Parliamentary uh, inquiry, or um, ask to speak out of order, either one. The gentleman is recognized for that purpose. We, you, the chairman of the subcommittee, explicitly gave Vice President Gore earlier today the opportunity to respond to Congressman Radonovich's statement which wasn't a question. And Mr. Mark. Well, that, that, in that, that case, if the gentleman would yield, I'll ask unanimous consent that the uh, uh, Mr. Gingrich be given three minutes to respond. Well, he should just be given a, we should, we should give the less, Speaker of the House the same courtesy we gave the minutes. Vice President of the United States. I can do it much less than three minutes. Let me just say, first of all, that the $646 billion, $6 billion tax increase comes out of the Obama budget and has an asterisk indicating it will be more than that. Uh, that's not my number. That's the president's uh, director of the budget's number. Second, I'd no, ask... He said that's how much would come in the cap-and-trade program that would be then redistributed. Yes, that's, but it's in the budget, so, so it could be redistributed. So you take money and you it redistribute could be redistributed. It. Okay, and you uh, propose some redistributing of dollars as well. On the MIT study, I'd Where does ask, your money come from? I'd ask permission, if I might. Where does your money come from? For your ideas here, where is the money going to come from that we're going to transform the American economy with American energy? Oh, look, I, I think when you pass... Where, it's gonna ha where is it going to come from for green coal and carbon sequestration? That's an expensive proposition. We've got to do it. We've got to invest in it. Where is the money going to come from to transform the way scientists are able to do their First work? First of all, in a Congress which passed a $787 billion stimulus without reading the bill, I think we can find the money. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to work together to find the money. Second, I've never said I'm against the government incentivizing change. I'm against the government punishing change. Third, uh, I would last to put in the record a, a recent article in the Weekly Standard called Fuzzy Math which is actually John McCormick's conversation with the MIT professor. And in terms of citations, I would cite uh, $10,800 cost per family of four by 2020, according to a Laffer study, $2,700 per family of four, according to Wharton Econometrics, uh, and $750 per year for the poorest quintile, according to the Center for Budget Policy Priorities, as some of my sources. Mr. Chairman, I don't object to any of those going in the record, but Mr. Gingrich, I'm sure glad you're not in charge of foreign policy. Do you think the only way to incentivize a country is by offering them more and more carrots? You know, you've think, got to, you're going to have some threat. And sometimes Chairman, you have to say, to incentivize you, we're going to give you some assistance, but there are going to be consequences. Mr. Chairman, I don't think of American citizens the way I think of foreign dictators. And I don't think this Congress should punish the American people. 
I think this Congress has every right to reward the American people, but I don't think Lincoln's government of the people, by the people, and for the people should be turned into a government punishing the people, and that's a major difference. Lastly, I'd point out that in the EPA analysis of your bill, your bill's not complete. And the EPA analysis included a 150% increase in nuclear power, and there's no nuclear power section of the bill. So I'd be perfectly happy to talk to you in more detail when the bill's complete. I'd be glad to come back and testify if the bill gets completed. But this is an incomplete bill, and the EPA analysis had certain assumptions that don't relate to the bill. But I'm always delighted uh, to be here with the chairman.